What's up, Octagudini in the garage? We have something very interesting to talk about today. The USPS, United States Postal Service, has finally released plans to replace the LLV, the Grumman Long Life Vehicle. I actually did a whole video on this and other um, historic mail delivery vehicles, mail Jeeps, the old DJ5s. Uh, two or three years ago, I'll leave a link to that video. If you want context on the specs, the manufacturer, production, the life, operation of the Grumman LLV. All that information is on that video. I'm going to reiterate as little of it as possible so that we can only talk about this news story that is just hitting today. Yesterday, the USPS released a 382 page report called the Report of Decision and Record of Environmental Consideration. What a terribly riveting title. What it essentially does is defends their decision to replace the fleet of LLVs, which are all over their life expectancy by a number of years, with a predominantly internal combustion engine fleet of vehicles. This goes directly in the face of what the current White House administration is hoping government agencies and civilians alike will do. It goes directly in the face of what the current White House administration asked the USPS to do. And it goes directly in the face of what the EPA advised the USPS to do. So why? Why would the USPS do this? That's what we're here today to find. We're going to talk about all the facts and determine, I don't know, let's just try to untangle this bowl of spaghetti and come to a reasonable, rational place. A hard thing to do when dealing with activists and matters of the environment. Let's talk about some facts. The LLVs that the USPS is currently using, those are the ubiquitous white vans you see everywhere in the United States. They went into production in 1987 after the USPS did another extensive multi-year investigation into what would be the best way to unify their mail delivery fleet. Before this, you had Jeeps, trucks, cars, bikes, horses, whatever you got, guys on pogo sticks. Uh, delivering the mail. They wanted to unify that. From 1987 to 1994, Grumman out of Pennsylvania built the LLV. Stands for Long Life Vehicle. They were given a 24-year life expectancy. I am not a mathematician, but I can tell you after getting out my calculator and counting on my toes, even the youngest of the LLVs is over their life expectancy by four or five years. The older ones are even older than that. As I mentioned in the previous video, a lot of these things are starting to break down. They're underpowered. They uh, do not have any AC from the factory and the heat they had from the factory usually doesn't work, though sometimes it works too well and they catch fire. Long story short, these things have to go. They're cool vehicles. I love them. I hope to own one someday, but they have served their purpose. We need to find a new vehicle. Since about 2015, the USPS has been actively courting a number of manufacturers, including Oshkosh Defense, who ultimately is getting the new contract for their new vehicles. These new vehicles are going to be called Next Gen generation delivery vehicles, NGVDVs. Now this hit a lot of people in the gut yesterday when they came out and said, yeah, we're going to be buying 90%. We're going to be buying 165,000 new vehicles. 90% of those are going to be conventional internal combustion engines. 10% of them will be plug-in battery electric vehicles. Why? Well, Louis DeJoy, the US postmaster came on and said, it's simple. The oldest reason, money. We ain't got no money, pockets not deep enough, no tango dinero. To implement a fully battery electric fleet would be, according to DeJoy, three to four b -b -b billion, with a B, billion dollars more expensive than implementing the 90%, 10% ICE, BEV that they are proposing. And apparently the USPS does not have three or four billion dollars laying around. I told them to look in the couch, apparently they didn't. Now this plan does outline their intention to slowly but surely increase that percentage of battery electric vehicles. I guess the idea is this, hey, where we're sitting right now, we can afford this 90-10 plan. As funding becomes available, we will invest in more battery electric vehicles, phasing out more internal combustion vehicles. Let's cut a tree down right now. The USPS is a quasi-government agency. They do operate with much more autonomy than a lot of government agencies or, or things that we think of as being 
organized by the government. That means the current White House administration can't just dictate what vehicles they need to buy, even though they would like to. Uh, and neither can the EPA or Congress. Now, all three of those groups are a little teed off with the USPS right now. Let's start from the top. The current White House administration wants the United States to step out in front as a global leader in the um, global emissions, discharge, global warming, uh, the whole thing. They want the United States, who I think may or may not have not the greatest global image when it comes to uh, climate change activism, or maybe it does, you know, if you ask nine people, you're probably going to get 10 different opinions on that. The, the current administration is making it a cornerstone issue. So for the USPS to say, eh, we don't really care, we're just going to buy a bunch of <laughs> dirty old pollutant gas burning engines is a slap in the face, but they can't do anything. Neither can the EPA, even though they have expressed their uh, displeasure with this plan. Uh, and Congress also can't do as much but they can do something they can't just straight up dictate that the usps buy battery electric or hybrid vehicles or whatever what they can do is put stipulations on the portion of the usps budget that comes from congress which depending on the year is um, varying percentages but some of their budget is generated themselves and some of it comes uh, allocated from congress congress could say hey you want that i, I don't even know the number i couldn't find it anywhere let's call it it's a billion dollars. You want that billion dollars from our coffers? You want that tax, that sweet, sweet, sweet taxpayer money? Well, you better be investing in battery electric vehicles. That may be something that Congress opts to do, uh, but in order for that to be successful, Congress would have to find a way to be successful doing anything. And that has not been um, the case recently. So even though just about anybody you ask would rather the USPS go, go in a different direction, they did release this 382 page report, which backs up their decision. And essentially what they said is this, if you paraphrase all 382 pages, it's that yes, the USPS wants to positively change its environmental impact uh, that, that its fleet is having on the planet. Right now, the best they can do is get 165 thousand new cleaner vehicles because let's not remember the llv uses the the gm iron duke four-cylinder it's an old inline four-cylinder uh two two or two five it's not efficient i don't know what the mileage is but i'll bet you it's in the teens so just getting a new and improved vehicle operating on 2022 standards is that's huge and i think that a lot of these environmental watchdogs and yappers are ignoring that fact just updating the fleet is going to do wonders for reducing carbon emissions additionally there will be uh, further offset by the 10% of the fleet that will be battery electric vehicles. Now, whether or not the future actually brings an increase in the percentage of battery electric vehicles and a decrease in the number of uh, internal combustion engines remains to be seen. Now, one thing that I did find interesting in this report, now I got this from reading the report, I didn't see this in any news articles, the way the USPS came to this decision, they said this is how much it's going to cost to invest in the charging infrastructure and the vehicles. And I imagine there's some maintenance infrastructure that would have to change switching from ICE to BEV. They estimated the cost of operating an internal combustion engine fleet based on 2021 national gasoline price averages. I'll bet all of you are seeing a problem with that right now. Do you want to know what the national average was for gasoline? In 2021, well, according to this report, it was $2.71. I don't know if you bought gas lately, but it does not cost $2.71 per gallon anymore. So I see that as a problem right away, um, kind of going against the USPS's decision. I don't know if there's anything in place to mitigate that. But unfortunately, I don't know that gas prices are going down. In fact, I would argue that the current administration is probably using the higher gas prices as motivation to get people out of internal combustion engines and into battery electric, uh, hybrid electric, whatever have you. Now let's move on to what these new vehicles are actually going to look like. They're pretty goofy looking, pretty futuristic, but they're purpose built, just like the LLV. That's what they're hoping to accomplish again with the new Oshkosh Defense next generation uh, delivery vehicle. Now they're hoping to take possession of the first 
500, 5,000 of these in 2023, so not even a year away. And they're estimating these things will be driven about 944,000 miles annually. They are estimating this vehicle will drive 1 million miles a year. It's pretty wild. Now, the first ones have already been out there testing since 2017, field testing in live environments. They've tested them in cities, in rural areas, suburban areas, neighborhoods, anything you can imagine. They uh, have all gone through a 24,000 mile obstacle course for durability testing, as well as cold weather testing, as well as ergonomics and efficiency testing for the walk-in cargo area, the right-hand drive configuration, and all the ergonomical features included in this truck to make it a cutting edge delivery vehicle. Things like a 360 camera, security cameras, Wi-Fi. This thing has all the automotive collision avoidance systems that you would expect to see on a modern luxury vehicle. Uh, automatic braking, lane keep assist, alerts. Essentially, even though the engine is quote unquote dumb, if you will. It's an old technology, internal combustion. They're doing everything they can to make this the most cutting edge vehicle that they can afford. And now where this brings us friends is to the end of the facts that we have for now. This story just came out this week. I imagine in the coming weeks, we're gonna get a lot more commentary from politicians on it, possibly more commentary uh, from Congress, maybe uh, environmental activists. Who knows, maybe the USPS will be strong-armed into changing it, certainly. I went looking for all the information I found on this, and across the board, the reaction was, how dare they? How dare they? <laughs> just a very close-minded, just a very close-minded reaction. You know what, I'm gonna say it. I don't care if I come off like a plebeian uh, and you guys think I'm a total climate denier. That's not me, by the way. Uh, I recognize that we need to do something about um, pollution and climate change. I just don't know that electric cars are it. Let's look into biofuels. Let's look into hydrogen cells. Uh, let's look into biodiesel. I, I don't know, man. It, I'm not a scientist. It's not my job to figure it out. It's y'all's job. Uh, there are, are enough glaring issues with electric vehicles that I'm not convinced, but clearly I'm in the minority because people are pissed at the USPS, not the least of which the current administration. They're pretty teed off. So I'd love to know down there in the squawk boxes. Now this issue has political overtones. I'm going to ask you to try to leave politics out of it. This is not a political channel. Uh, so let's have a conversation about vehicles. This is a car channel. What do you think? Do you think their decision is short-sighted, is irresponsible, or do you see the point? I was floored that they didn't go with electric vehicles, but I was ultimately happy because I, I think it's dangerous committing to an electric vehicle fleet when there's so many glaring issues with charging infrastructure and everything else. I'm gonna leave this here, but you betcha, if there's more news on it, I will update you. If you guys want a video uh, on a full um, profile, of the Oshkosh next generation delivery vehicles, leave me a comment down in your squawk boxes. Let me know and I'll try to put a video together on that. Uh, again, please leave me your comments down below because I want to know where the common people fall on this. I know there are people that are, you know, firmly pinned in one direction or the other and couldn't be swayed regardless of any facts <laughs> that get thrown in their face. But for the rest of us who are willing to have, you know, an intelligent, informed conversation and, and come to potentially new conclusions based on uh, new facts, let's have an informed, uh, hopefully polite and cordial conversation down in squawk boxes. I'd like to thank you all for joining me on this one. I know I've been sporadic with the videos. I'm getting some stuff figured out, but I assure you, Deanie in the Garage is not going anywhere, and we'll be back very soon with junkyard videos, with repair videos, with Jeep videos, and of course, with more automotive news, because I love nothing more than getting on here and screaming into a microphone about opinions and facts and details and stuff that have to do with the automotive world. As always, thanks for watching.